All right, Rob says, you ready to start, Destiny? Let's go. Destiny says, okay, I'll start. So this is just a reminder for our code of conduct. Respect each other, love each other, you know, the usual rules. Peace, love, and happiness. Okay, any new people here with us today? Or is it the same old, same old, the regulars? Doesn't matter. It's good to see all of you today. All right, so Catherine. Anastasia, did you want to say something? Did someone say something? Interpreter? No one. Okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure I didn't talk over anyone. All right. We'll start with Catherine. Um, our advocacy efforts. Take it away. Okay, great. So um, I wanted to talk today about advocacy. Um, and basically, uh, our working group has like three buckets, right? Where we can add our like our activities. So we're working on visibility. Uh, I think we're doing a great job there. Um, you know, like having the meetups live streamed on LinkedIn, um, uh, you speaking at Cube Crash. Um, so I think uh that, that's uh, very successful and we'll want to continue that. And also, of course, like the CNCF always like resharing our posts and that's super important. So I think we're very successful there. Let's keep that going. The other bucket is networking, right? Like, I think that is also true. Like you are also, you're connecting, uh, there is the signing um, happy hour and there's a lot of conversation on Slack, uh, help people helping each other. Um, so uh, really that supportive network um, that's I feel like it's very successful. The other bucket uh, is advocacy and we've started but that's a little bit of our weak point and it would be great to restart that a little bit because it has always been kind of part of the group but it's kind of like gotten a little bit in the background and basically uh, our um, approach to advocacy has been, and I really love that, it's advocating through education and empathy, uh, right? So um, it's really important to the storytelling part versus demanding, I need this, right? And then we've been doing a lot of that because um, it's really important for hearing people to understand how does it feel to be deaf or hard of hearing in situation X? And that's why I understand. Like, and So basically like the why is as important as the how, right? Because like the how, it may be just like a demand, I need this, but understanding why is really important because that creates empathy. And the storytelling, uh, the reason I say that's so important is because if people never met someone who's deaf, they have no idea what it is. We're very busy. We think of, we don't take the time to think about many things <laughs> very deeply. So the story, like with movies, you are able to put yourself in someone's shoes, right? And if you do that, then you're like, oh, wow, true. And like that, that's what creates empathy. That's why like the storytelling, the explaining why is so important. So people can understand and put themselves in your shoes. Um, and storytelling has like a very, and with storytelling, I mean, just sharing your experience, but vividly, right? Like kind of like with feelings and this is uh, how it feels and so on. Okay, so, um, what does advocacy mean for our group? Uh, so I think there are like three steps because it may be like some people may have like some abstract kind of idea of what it is. Of course, it's like advocating for your rights, but what, what would it look like for us here? So I think the first step is always identifying a focus area, right? And so we did the first time with the conference best practices because everyone wants to go to conferences and we want them to be accessible, right? But a good way of thinking about it is like, so what do you wish your like people, your employer, your teammates, uh, teammates knew prior to working with you, for, ex uh, for example, right? Like what about maybe areas of virtual meetings or job interviews, or maybe like even open source meetings, which are different than uh, um, conferences because of resources and so on. So what are areas that we would like to improve? And from your experience and what you've learned and figured out with people around you, what would you have liked that they knew before? Because that will help other people who are just getting started. So step one is identifying a focus area. Uh, step two is creating 
uh, best practices to publish then on our website. Exactly what we've done with uh, the conference uh, best practices, right? And so we can have one or two people who lead, but ideally everyone, as many people as possible would help improve it, right? This should not be someone's opinion, right? If one person <laughs> writes a best practice, it's their opinion. This should not be an, a, a personal opinion. It should be a consensus of the group. We have different people, as we know, like deaf people are very diverse. Uh, we have people who are hard of hearing. We have people who sign. We have people who lip read. We have people who rely on captions. So it's like everyone has different um, needs and we need to make, make sure we capture all of that and not just like one specific deaf kind of subgroup, right? Uh, that benefits from it. And then once we do that, we need to get the word out, right? There is no... Uh, um, benefit and having and publishing something that is in the internet that no one finds and no one looks for because no one actually knows that it's there. So um, I think the first thing is like we can always do is like share with anyone within our network that could benefit from it, your employer, uh, people you interact with, you know, like just making sure everyone like that's like the low hanging fruit. Uh, also kind of creating a social media campaign, right, where we post about it, we should do this regularly, you know, like post about this and tag specific uh, people, like for uh, the conference best practices, we should tag conference organizers. Um, and uh, also an email campaign, like if we know how to contact a target group, um, do that. Uh, that. That can also be like a conference talk topic, right? Like if you don't, if you want to talk, present at a conference and you don't know what to talk about, you can talk about one specific resource, you know, like, uh, and then uh, talk about the importance of that and then just use that as your talking points. Um, and then an open question to, to, to everyone is like, how else can we advocate for that? Like we need to brainstorm. There may be different options depending on what a resource that is. Okay, so we did create a dedicated channel for that, um, so uh, it's called DHH slash, um, not slash, little uh, dash uh, advocacy, um, because our channel is very busy and it's very difficult to have a focused discussion because like you ask a question and then people post things about exactly, so it's like, which is fine. Um, so uh, our channel is more for, you know, like, news and excitement and things like that, but we need something to have like very focused discussions because I think like advocacy is something important and we need to be focused um, on that. So if, yeah, if you wanna join, please join the discussion if you're interested in participating in advocacy. Um, we already started the conversation about two weeks ago with um, some of our core team members. You will see a lot of information in there uh, interesting deep conversations. Uh, so if you want to catch up with what we were talking about, um, and yeah, we wanted to invite everyone here to join. Um, we're also experimenting with a better way for async discussions, right? So um, we are all in different um, time zones uh, and not always are interpreters are available and so on, we should be able to have discussions async, like good discussions. And um, so there is a link in the agenda. Um, so check that out. Uh, it's an experiment. Uh, hopefully it will, we will adopt and uh, adapt it and improve it over time. But the goal is, yeah, like how can we have these conversations that are productive um, um, in the channel? And then just saying, Hi, Ian, so glad you are finally able to make it. <laughs> it's been Thank a long you. time. Thank you, I'm glad to be back. Um, okay, and so first of all, how does it all sound regarding advocacy and, and having a refocus on that? This is Rob. I can answer a few of those questions really quickly. So first of all, you were talking about demands and before uh, 
you know, you, your question about what you wish your employer would have known before they met you. Um, there is another group, a deaf professional Slack group, and there is a lot of information there that could be shared as for um, needs and wants versus requirements in terms of uh, communication. Ian could probably share something like that. It's really in depth and it talks about what deaf and hard of hearing members need, what they need during an interview, during meetings, whether they're virtual or in person, um, conferences. There's just a really brief document I can find that and send it to you. There is a few different um, deaf individuals, Jameer, um, who else? I'm trying to think. Kratzig, I can't remember that guy's name. Um, and then uh, Jesse, other deaf individuals that are not here that I could then get their input and give you ideas as to what their requirements and needs and wants are, because you're right, they're all over the board. So that would be something really nice, I think, to have to help with that discussion. Um, for asynchronous conversations, um, you know what? Our primary language is sign language. It's not uh, English text. Um, written English. So sometimes it's easier to communicate in that signed language instead of an English text language. So maybe we could come up with a way to have an interactive discussion very, very, through sign first before we move it to a channel that's text-based. I don't know how we could definitely make that um, comfortable for everyone because some people are definitely more comfortable communicating in sign language versus written English. What else did I want to say? You had another question. Oh, events. Um, Leon Adato sent out some CFP that are coming up. Um, you know, what do people want to talk about? That's something we could discuss also. And we're going to switch interpreters really quick. Great. OK. Yes, yeah, switch. Uh, Rob, just one thing, uh, the conversation should also be accessible for hearing people, so <laughs> we also need accessibility, so something to keep in mind, uh, um, so I think, I think it's important to have, common in Slack would be, yeah, because it's like we need to have a conversation together, I think like if some group has having a conversation and then go to, it's like, like the other people are not missing, are, are missing, that part of the conversation. So I think that makes it really difficult. So I do feel that we need to have a common language. Um, and written English, is that common? I mean, my first language is not English either, FYI, <laughs> right? So, but, and, um, but I think it's, yeah, it's important yeah, to- I mean, we could have, you know, open conversations and, you know, it, we can certainly depend on verbal communications, PR, Slack, you know, through email. Um, we can have it. It's just slow. So, you know, we could have, uh, I guess it's a policy of the same as here. We need to make it accessible for all. Yeah, but it's it's okay if it's, I think like the good thing about the async is that it doesn't have to happen here and there, right? So it's like, uh, so if we group uh, the conversations in a threat, I don't expect everyone, like, if I'm asking a question to respond right away, because people are working, people are whatever. So, like, it's everyone, like, it it will be slower, but as long as people can can respond when they have the time to focus on that, especially with the advocacy part, that's, like, you have to think about it. It's not something where you're just, like, you know, so I think it's fine if it's slow, you know, it's, like, it, ha it will, will, will say, okay, we'll give everyone a few days, and then uh, so I think that's totally fine, and I think it's it's good because because of the different time uh, before because of the time difference, people don't have time at the same time, you know, like and and you see it like there's a certain time when Anastasia and Milad are more active, and then they're like completely silent because they're working, and so it's like uh, so and there is like a huge difference, and then and uh, and where we're at, we're richly all over the world, um, but yeah, so. One, so, okay, so the first thing that uh, we can do, because we do have the best practices for uh, the events already. And so I had posted something on Slack, but I was like, I think just before the weekend. So I'm not sure who uh, saw that. So uh, we started creating a sheet with event organizers, so like our target list. Um, and then I did start a draft 
for an email, LinkedIn and Twitter posts uh, to reach organizers. Um, so it's all linked in the agenda. Uh, so please uh, yeah, have a look. And uh, so basically how everyone can help, right? Is like, uh, first of all, like expand the list, like who did we miss? Again, we, we're not targeting specific conferences, we're targeting organizers, right? Because some organizer does several conferences. So it's like whoever does like, and some will, you know, like have 10 different comps, like the Linux Foundation is one, right? We don't need to put like each conference, like with the Linux Foundation, we're already targeting the same people who are doing all the conferences. Um, and then, uh, so help expand that, uh, review the draft, uh, and um, like if you have any feedback or input, I would love for this to come from deaf and hard of hearing people. So uh, we can, you know, the post can say uh, accessibility for us. That's much more powerful than accessibility for them, but right, like it's coming from you, from someone directly. So I think that's more powerful. Um, and then, so we don't need everyone to do that, but we do need everyone to help promote on social media, right? Like if someone posts, like reshare, like there we need everyone, not everyone needs to read, <laughs> to write the initial post. So um, two people have volunteered, uh, so Sandeep and Anastasia. Um, so yeah, I hope, like at least for the actual, like writing the email and the, the post, right? I hope everyone volunteers to share. Um, so uh, if anyone else uh, wants to help as well, uh, please let us know on um, Slack. You don't have to raise your hand right now, but please don't forget because it's important. Uh, and yeah, let's just push that out. It's really good content. Um, we have, uh, if you missed it, uh, Sharla created a great events checklist, making it really easy. So I think it's super valuable. Um, so uh, let's make sure that we, uh, get that out there and that as many conference organizers at least see it. Doesn't mean they will apply it, but they should know it's there. Um, that's all I had for advocacy and the best practices. Any follow-up questions or comments? Okay, then I'll move to KubeCon scholarships. So um, KubeCon is coming up. Um, as you know, there are scholarships for diversity. Uh, the link is there. Uh, so please apply. The most important question is why you would like to attend, right? Don't take, don't wing that. <laughs> don't, right? Like think about that. Cause it's like, that is uh, the thing that will, they will base their decision on that question. Everything else are just details. So take your time, uh, ask for feedback within this group. You know, I'm also happy to uh, review and help polish. Yeah, just don't send something along. This is important, right? Because it's like, again, that's that's what will uh, determine whether they will accept you or not. Um, so, oh, and then for, please list CNCF projects. That's more for maintainers. You just add CNCF deaf and hard of hearing working group. You ask that it's like, it's not, it's not technically a project, but it is an initiative. Um, so any questions regarding scholarship? I hope everyone is on board. Milad. So I saw that and I definitely wanted to add um, something else there. Um, it's a real challenge sometimes in terms of getting scholarships approved and everything. And sometimes you can't fly to the US if even if you're close, you know, and you're not and you're in another country. So um, does anyone um, I think you wanted to share that um, that challenge, Andres? Yeah, it's it's a lot logistically, and it's 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 not easy, you know, to get a visa or to get you know all the proper paperwork lined up far in advance, and and you you, you have to do it in advance. You can't wait to the last minute. But at the visas and things you need are challenging. And Milad saying yes, um, 
I don't know how fast you can get around those things um, to get visas. I don't know if there's a, an expedited way to do that. Like some places have a special, um, for like uh, some kind of letter you can get from the CNCF to help expedite that. I don't know if that would assist you to kind of get around some of the processes. And Rob's saying CNCF has something um, they can fill out if you need, I'm almost sure. Um, you could fill it out um, and um, what's the conference for, um, how you can tell immigration or whatever um, that you need to attend this and maybe that will help. But it's easy to get into London, right? When you, um, maybe Salt Lake City, not so much, but London. Um, Anastasia is saying, um, if you're talking about um, London in the UK, um, to get into the UK, I don't know how hard that will be for, yeah, he's saying, I don't know. I don't know, I'm a little chicken, I don't know. <laughs> I can wing it. So um, would it be easier to get into London for you? Oh yes, much easier than to get into the States. Mm -hmm. Yes, because um, Columbia last year, um, they made it harder. So um, it's a visa issue, it's like a three month window for visas, where uh, in the US, it's it's quite challenging. So um, I, I'm thinking there's a letter, I was, somebody posted something in the chat, but they will give you um, a visa letter if you're gonna be a speaker or an attendee. And that's what Sandeep says in the chat. So you might wanna read what he wrote. Yeah, and how long it takes, it literally depends on which con uh, um, embassy you go like or consulate different places in the same country if they have like a, a lot of requests it just like you just get at the back of the line so it doesn't really it's I mean there there is some time that takes to it but then it's like how many people are applying and then if you are in a country that has lots of application it will take longer than in one that has fewer so it's it's very difficult to say but I think they are telling people a little earlier than before because that was the big uh, complaint that they would give scholarships to short notice and people would not have time to get the visa. Um, it's still not a long time. So, so once you get it, you have to jump on it. <laughs> Anastasia said, I wanted to add that it's not only um, a problem for just a few countries, but it's a lot of them. And there's a lot of, um, you know, trying to get in of various embassy requests, et cetera. So, um, it, there's just always a long time to wait, it feels like. So UK um, tends to have a long line as well, but um, I think it's about two months they're about, um, yeah, that you have to wait. I think that's the, pretty much the standard one. Yeah, and a reminder also, so uh, there is a sponsorship, uh, the sponsorship, the scholarship by Rob. Um, there's a scholarship and then there's also the, um, what's it called, speaker uh, funding. So for people who are getting uh, a talk accepted, you can also uh, um, submit that. And so I think this time, oh, this time they're going to announce the schedule before the deadline is, um, is uh, before the deadline for the scholarships is over. So I think everyone who gets a talk accepted should go directly to the speaker funding. And then everyone who did not get a talk accepted should go to should try to do the sponsor uh, the scholarship. Um, that way we have like the, a little people spread out because they're not going to have like a ton of people from our group, right? Uh, because there are maintainers and there are other like they have so many categories that fit into the the uh, scholarship. Uh, a thing that they have to kind of make sure that they allocate enough scholar like that they're fair basically right so if we can spread it out hopefully we get i'm pretty really hoping we get uh, some talk so we can uh, tap into that uh, bucket yeah 
So I think, oh, go ahead, uh, Destiny. Yeah, I just wanted to emphasize too about going ahead and applying, applying for those scholarships. Um, even if you don't think you're gonna get a visa and you don't think there's time, um, still apply. Still send in your information because even at the last minute you get the scholarship and at the last minute you're waiting and the visa hasn't come through yet, um, it, sometimes one week before it can work out. So, you know, it's the luck of the draw. And I would say, so go ahead and apply for everything you need to go and don't like hold back. You know, I mean, we don't want you to be a chicken. We want you to go. We want you to do it. <laughs> well, if you that's don't try, you idea, can. Saying, that's a good idea, Andres. Um, you can definitely apply for the scholarship, fill out all your paperwork, do your visa apps, all the things you need to do. And um, maybe some magic will happen <laughs> and everything will work out. I mean, you have our full support in doing everything you can to get there. If it doesn't work, okay, but it might. You know, I mean, it's a good experience to just get it rolling for next time. And then maybe it'll go smoother when you're headed to London. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I'll, I don't know where to get that information. Um, it will post it on Slack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't try, you can't, you will not, definitely not get it, right? So that's like the worst thing that can happen is getting a no and that's the same outcome as if you don't try so um hey jay congrats on your talk hope it went well hi yeah hi everyone yeah it went great it went great yeah thanks wonderful yeah hi everyone i think you said it was not yeah the, the talk went great and um good discussion um we really felt like it went well we were able to take turns. We got a lot of good questions and feedback. So um, a few people came up. Um, uh, oh, and it wasn't the greatest turnout. It was better than nothing, but um, we had a lot of good feedback and um, we talked with a lot of people after the conference and um, we got feedback on um, how we could make it more accessible for the deaf and hard of hearing folks that attend the conference. We got to give that feedback. We talked about CNCF, you know, we talked about best practices. So we were able to um, have a lot of good contacts and um, we were able to figure out how to improve accessibility at conferences. It was awesome. We're gonna go ahead and switch interpreters. <laughs> well, that's great. Cause it's like, that's how, uh, I mean, one talk will not do all the difference, but you know, like it's one talk here, one talk there, one talk there, you know, like that's how the information spreads. And, and again, it's like meeting people, you know, telling them like how it makes you feel if you don't have it, like that whole thing, that's so powerful, right? And it, again, it will not change anything tomorrow, but over time it will. So I'm, I'm so glad you were there uh, and on the stage and met people. So that's, that's really great. Yeah, it was a really cool experience. I enjoyed it. It was fun. It was actually my first talk that I've ever done. I was nervous, but I feel like it went smooth despite it. It was about an hour talk with 15 minutes of questions. At the end It's good. Disney says first and many. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> um, he says, actually, that was your second, Jay. Jay. Jay says, well, I was on that panel. Panel, yeah. That was like, like very last minute. We kind of was like, hey, can you jump in? Oh, yeah. And that was uh, that was because Ian couldn't make it. Yeah. Ian, that was the talk you couldn't make. And Jay uh, uh, jumped in. So. Oh, yeah. I appreciate him switching me out at the last minute. <laughs> Jay says, yeah, yeah, it was good. Um, and then I think Sandeep wanted to say something, at least on the about the sick contributors. This is um, Destiny. So spotlight on the SIG and contraband team. Sandeep, you wanted to talk about that next agenda item? The interpreter missed the beginning of that. Apologies. Uh, yes. Uh, so it's just like the SIG contraband team does a spotlight on the French SIG. Okay. So I think they could do a spotlight article on our working group so that we get some much more visibility and like a lot of people, a lot of technical people, and a lot of SIGs will come to know about our working group. So that is a CNCF blog post, or I don't know how the SIG... Yep, correct. 
the spotlight blog series. Yeah. Okay, so like having the CNCF kind of uh, write a blog post about us, um, our our working group. So so there is a team that creates blog posts. So they send their questions to us, and then we have oh. to write our answers. And then they refactor it, correct the grammar and everything. So it is an asynchronous, I mean, it is an asynchronous mode of communication, but if you want to do a Zoom call, they are happy to do it. It depends on what our preferences. If you want questions and we want to write answers, fine. If you want a live Zoom call, fine. Yeah. Yeah. I know we can publish any time something on the CNCF blog post uh, on the on the blog because uh, I know I mean the person and you actually some of you met Jesse uh, who um, manages all that but the problem is always like writing it right it's like who writes it so if they actually are helping with that part that's awesome but like FYI we can always write something and I would be very surprised if they would say no <laughs> so especially Jesse is a big supporter. Um, of our group um but yeah let's do that if they're taking if they're doing the heavy lift it's like can you just get that started sandeep with whatever it takes yeah i have to uh, get that started with kathleen kathleen okay. kathleen Field, and also frederico you happen to know him frederico oh frederico uh, frederico. Knows. oh yeah i think so uh, he was also co-chair of the uh, KubeCon, right, Frederick? Oh. Right. Uh, no, no, not that co-chair of the KubeCon. Frederick is the person who basically writes most of the Spotlight series. Remember, yeah. let me ping you. His, let me ping you. His ID in Slack. Yeah. Well, let's let's yeah, let's just get it started and like whoever it is, and then like uh, take yeah. it from there. Just uh, let us know how how to get the ball rolling. Definitely. Yep. Definitely. And. And also, like, uh, we can leverage the, I mean, we can leverage the CNCF communications team to, I mean, we can leverage the CNCF communications team to help spread the word about our best practices. Yeah, so what we could also always do, but again, it's like extra work, so, uh, is whenever we do a, um, uh, like, for instance, for the, um, 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 conference best practice we could write a blog post about how we do this and then they would publish it like that's uh, stuff i mean to leverage the cncf in general to get the word out about uh, about things so maybe something we should do as well yeah like they could post about us in twitter they could post about us in linkedin so that mm -hmm. handle has a lot of followers if i were to tweet and the cncf were to tweet there is so much difference in the followers no a little bit. Huh? I have <laughs> like a little bit. <laughs> the CNCF has like millions I'm... of followers. No, I I know. I'm just kidding. It's a lot more. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> any of us compares. Um. So yeah, yeah, we should do it, and that's why. Uh, like whenever we have a social media post, we need to. Uh, that is about the stuff that we do. We should always make sure that we, um, um, use their handle. Right, like tag them. Also, the, also, like I'm a part, like I told you, I'm a part of the comms team. Okay, so I've been uh, meeting them. So they told me that uh, I have access to the social media handle. Of course, oh. like I cannot post it. Uh, it goes into a buffer and they review it. Mm -hmm. Like I post it. I have to write a social media post. Suppose I want to post about our group on Twitter. Then mm -hmm. I have to schedule a post. It goes into the moderation queue. The moderators will review it and if they find it appropriate, make changes and post it. So they said, please use it. Please talk about your group as much as you want. It's all yours. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should leverage that. That's that's awesome. I did not know. That's... Yeah. Any tool we can use. Uh, yes, I have access to a tool called as a buffer, being FFER. So that buffer will schedule the post on Twitter and Mastodon. But I think uh, I think you can just share the blur with me and I could share with them. Oh, yes, yes, I missed to see who was it. 
Sorry. It was Andrew. They are still at the yeah, conference. Yeah, who was that? Ah, hi. Hi, see Hi. Nice to see you. <laughs> hi. Nice to see you. The stars of the day are here. Okay. I think both of them were the speakers, no? Yes, both exactly. Yeah. Correct. Oh, this is Destiny. So now we're going to be talking about um, contributions to deaf owners. And this is Milad. Yeah, so I added this agenda item at the very last moment. Just an idea I wanted to throw out to the group. Um, there's some great benefits about not being the only cloud native. Instead, we could use all different projects. Um, for my own, for example, I have my own project that is a uh, open source thing that everyone can see. And if you all have any ideas, any suggestions, I welcome all of that support. Um, also, if you want to share your own deaf owned libraries, deaf owned project, anything like that. Um, whether it's at the front end, the back end, um, whether it's database, um, anything really that's technology based, we would like to see it. And the reason why I think this is important is because as a deaf person, I contribute and if I can communicate my work to other deaf individuals that are also in tech, that's very inspiring. For example, we have this deaf community here, wonderful skilled technicians here, but it's hard to uh, really show showcase our work sometimes because sometimes we don't know where to start with the technology. Sometimes it's new for us. Sometimes it's an interesting topic, but we don't really have a way to get into the door of it. I still haven't really grown some areas that I was looking into growing. Um, I have a website. So if any of you have websites, resources um, that you need contribution or support with, I'm happy to give suggestions, some topics, you know, and then I feel like we can help our community grow with our technical skills by sharing different projects that we're working on. That's just an idea I wanted to throw out there. Um, where did, Ost where did Anastasia go? Did she leave? Jay says, yeah, she left. Oh, that meant, well, yesterday, Anastasia uh, actually developed her own personal website and she was asking me some questions yesterday about how to do some things, some formatting. And so I thought, you know, why don't you just go ahead and put this on GitHub I can look over it, make my suggestions, offer some my support, um, maybe HTML support, CSS support. Destiny also has experience with a few other things that she could contribute to Anastasia. So it's, you know, deaf peer to deaf peer giving suggestions and feedback, which then helps everyone grow their technolog technological skills. I think that's really cool. And this is Destiny. I also have another idea um, to throw out there for Catherine. I submitted a talk for basically showing how people not formally teach, but how people can um, start with open source. And I'm wondering if I could include Malad and mine and other if projects in my talk. And if so, who do I talk to about doing that? It's just an idea I just thought of right now. Are projects like that something I could include in my talk, Catherine, or no? So that is a the tag Montana track. I would talk to Josh. Uh, I think that needs to be specific to the CNCF because it's basically a guaranteed talk. So um, it would have to be part of the. But if you're not, I would assume. But ask. I mean, Josh worked with you on that talk uh, on the submission, so you you can ask him. But my feeling is, yeah. All right. Um, for that one, you know, I wanted to talk, talk, talk about my experience and I think it'd be awesome if I could talk about some other projects as well, because I know that it's had to, sad to say it, but there are deaf owned open source things out there, but I want to show it, mention it so that people are really able to grasp that. Mm -hmm. 
Well, maybe you can. Um, Well, maybe you can, uh, like, if it's open source. Uh, I, would, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, sorry, Catherine. So Malad's saying, my sense of this is that with open source, um, sometimes we don't know where to go, how to contribute to different projects like that. And so does it mean, like, I need to contribute a big work effort. It doesn't always mean that way. I can start small. Um, you don't have to have a lot of experience. You could just start very, very um, low risk contributions. For example, sometimes we have to start, we have to show people how to contribute in a small way. So we could show the website, show what it looks like, explain what the functionality is, how they can contribute, how they can make suggestions, different issues that come up, maybe um, things that um, are open or closed, things that need to be merged. And so I think we can make a video for our deaf peers to watch and maybe have an idea of how to best support and contribute. Oh, bye Jay, thank you, good to see you. Jay says bye everyone, bye. Destiny, did you want to add anything, any other ideas? Destiny says, yeah, I agree with you, Malad. I think this is a great idea because I didn't know anything about GitHub getting, I was just playing around with it, trying to figure it out. And then I was able to learn a lot from CNCF and I can only, people can only do so much themselves. It's really important to join in with other people to, to learn from their experience. Once I did join with CNCF, I learned so much. I remember you, um, Someone sh showed me something like, you know, just push something, pull something when I was learning it on my own. But with CNCF, they gave me an in-depth lesson into this, and it was really incredible. Uh, so <laughs> um, okay, um, are we done with that? We're going to, are we going to move on at this point? Or does somebody have something else to add about that? I have one thing to add, and I love the idea, Malad Destiny. If you all think it's appropriate on the advocacy channel and you want to talk about the projects you're working on or um, even relevant trending topics, I'm keeping a lookout for media opportunities. And the more I know about the work you all are doing or what you'd like to talk about, the more I can do a better job kind of scanning for relevant media opportunities as they come up. Okay, terrific. And for the, those who joined after Sharla joined and have missed her introduction. So she works in PR, that's her specialty. And um, she does that for work, for pay, paying customers, but she's also volunteering her time to find opportunities for this group for free, like as a volunteer, right? Like, um, so that uh, we get actually more exposure, so just for context, because otherwise it might be like, why should I be telling you this? It's like, well, we, she actually has an insight on what reporters are looking for. Darla, Darla, that's a very wonderful joke. So Catherine just says she works for PR and Sarla cracked the joke. That is public relations and not pull requests. Exactly, exactly. Always the confusion. It's a public relations. <laughs> it's a bit I confusing. For, in everyone, space. for anyone who's looking to get started, we get pull requests and don't know how to do. So like the Kubernetes contributor submit has a very good getting started document that you can follow. It's like a step-by-step -step document on how you can start getting contributed to open source. But I do agree. I mean, I mean, it's very tricky. Like, given, given there's such a vast ecosystem, you really don't know where to start. It's very challenging. Milad want to, wanting to add, he said, I, I didn't mean PR, you know, I mean, that's, that's fantastic. I didn't mean to be um, dismissive of that, but um, also, um, as, as it relates to um, the deaf community itself and having that sort of coordination, because PR can help eliminate some of the um, barriers there and help it grow. So um, PR is really terrific. So without that, you know, I mean, it's hard for people to really learn something 
because they don't know it's available. They don't know it's there. So to get it out there and to have it more visible and have those conversations, have more eyes on them so people can learn, that's really great. So that means, um, you know, it, that people can see, oh, we, we have deaf and hard of hearing folks. We need to value that community. Destiny says, right. Anybody, other questions or comments or no? Okay, um, Catherine, you wanted to speak about best practices for social media? Yes, exactly. So um, I, yeah, so I just wanted to make sure, because again, like social media is an opportunity to get the word out, right? Be it our best practices or whatever. And um, so one thing, it, it's important that uh, the message is there as well, right? Because a lot of people, so um, it was particularly after, um, um, so um, Andrew created that great video, right? About the talk and was like, oh my God, that's awesome. But there was very little text. Not everyone watches the video. So it's like, okay. And so I kind of uh, tried to say like, oh, let's talk, uh, let's add a little bit more to that. So basically whenever you are posting something, even if it's a video, make sure that you have a description like what what is it about right like even if it's a video or a blog post provide a little context because not everyone clicks right uh and then mention and tag the cmcf whenever possible because we want to leverage them right as as sandeep said i think there's 125,000 followers they have right so we want to tap into that uh audience and then always use that opportunity for positive reinforcement say thank you. So I was like, uh, say thank you to the, uh, to the uh, conference who was accessible, you know, like when you make them look good, they're going to be motivated to do it again. So it's like, and then it's like the conference as well, but like also the people specifically you work with, then they're going to be feel like flattered. Right. And then they're more likely to, uh, to um, remember and do it again. Right. So it's like, uh, so basically what is this about? Tag everyone who is relevant so they can because if you tag people, they generally will also share, right? So that's additional people. And then don't forget the thank you and flatter people and make them feel good about it. So they continue to do whatever they were doing. Um, and um, so, yeah, just quick reminder um, to to do that. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward. I, I um, linked to uh, the post uh, there in as an example uh, in the agenda. So you can have a look whenever, if, if you want. And then I wanted to, uh, to just share one uh, exciting bit of news. Uh, so there is now a blind and visually impaired channel on the CNCF uh, uh, Slack channel with uh, three people. So uh, there may be another group starting and uh, um, doing some work. So that's kind of exciting. Very early though, but it's starting. Great. Um, other comments, feedback? Um, I would just like to let you know too that the interpreters have a hard stop. So um, any comments or feedback we wanna make, we need to do it before the top of the hour because at 12 Eastern, we have to stop. Uh, I think, you know, you know, Jen was trying to say something. What did you say, Sandeep? Could you repeat? Uh, I mean, Gino, Gino was trying to say something, I think. No, Gino. Yes, um, I had a question. From Hong Kong. The CNCF, um, I know there's going to be some events there and they're planning for that. Um, but if you do sign up and you go to Hong Kong, um, the deaf community in China and Vietnam and um, Hong Kong, and um, we would be very anxious to learn from you. And um, and if you don't sign up, you really kind of lose that opportunity. I really hope everyone will consider coming. And um, if, if Catherine, you have um, a list about CNCF um, Hong Kong, I can let them all know that they need to be there to support it and that they would have accessibility and all of that. So some information from you might be helpful. 
So which event is that exactly? Uh, in Hong Kong, but... Yes, there's going to be an event in Hong Kong, CNCF. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's going to be a panel. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same organizer, the same people who do KubeCon also do, do those, unless it's a, um, a community event, I'm not sure. Uh, so it would be uh, just like when you sign up, like it's important for you to kind of say that you have that accessibility need. I think that is standard now also for um, local events, community events. They did ask for that. Um, but yeah, basically uh, it's all, um, I mean, we have the best practices uh, for conference organizers and that's what they should use, right? But again, if it is if if it is the same team, if it's like organized by the Linux Foundation, it should be the same team that does KubeCon. So it's a matter of letting them know that you want, are planning to attend and are deaf and then like, yeah, just let them take it from there. Yes, um, I you can see the link is in the chat as well. So it's it's there. You can use that. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, the information is there and you can use that and how like as a model to help draft something if you need it or you can get help from us and Catherine, etc. Oh, I see now it's KubeCon China. So it's like, yeah, there, there are three big, the big bits, the three big conferences is like KubeCon North America, Europe and then China. So that's like the big one. So that's the same team. Um, so yeah, just in the registration, make sure you're you're mentioning that. They probably also have scholarships just as the other. So it's exactly the same thing that we're doing for Salt Lake City. They should have there. Um, so yeah, you can apply. And if you, we, you're the only one in that region in our group. Uh, so if you know what other deaf engineers uh, who are interested, who might be interested in going, you should also kind of encourage them to, to apply. Uh, there are probably much fewer deaf uh, applier, people who apply there. So your chances are much higher to actually get accepted. Because now everyone is going to apply for North America. So your chances there are pretty high, I would say. So take advantage. The, the scholarship for the conference is already closed. Uh, I think the last date was June 23rd. Oh, it's August. Yeah, it, yeah. Next year. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, it's, it's between the two conferences. It's in August, yeah. But definitely apply next time and bring a friend. I think this is the oops. also um, I had a question, Catherine, um, on that list. If people want to learn about certain certifications and they don't have those certifications, um, I don't, certifications for what? Everyone's asking the same question. Like Kubernetes, um, let's say um, somebody is wanting to present in Hong Kong and I show them I don't have a certification, but, and, but I wanna be a presenter. Can I still, if I'm not certified? Milad saying, yeah, certification or no certification. I don't think that is related to your acceptance for a talk, but if you wanted a good experience um, and you had good work experience and you have a lot of knowledge in the topic, I think that would be what they would base it on. Um, like if, if you fill out the form and you have your team review it and it looks good, you're more likely to get picked, whether you have a certification or not for a talk. Um, even if you don't have one, I don't think it's as important as having a good topic and good content and experience to back that up. I think that's probably the most important part. He says, okay, yeah. Anybody else have an opinion on that? That please add. Yeah, Sandy put a comment in the uh, chat. 
said you don't need a certification by Kubernetes to present at the conference. If you submit your idea and the organizers like it, they select you, that's it. So yeah, you don't need a certification. Well, makes sense. Okay, yeah, I I wasn't certified and I did North American keynote stuff last year and I wasn't, I didn't have any certification to speak of. So I was on the panel with other presenters as well. So yeah. Okay, we've got one minute. So any last comments? Okay, well, we can just chat then and we can close the meeting. So um, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta I gotta hit the subway what says <laughs> I gotta it, you know it's like if the doors are closing on the subway and your face gets stuck in the door that's kind of where we are right now. <laughs> all right nice to see everybody enjoyed seeing you as usual wonderful talk and we'll talk again um, hope to see you next month Woo, we've already sweated from getting this done. So yes, <laughs> from leading this meeting. Okay, take care everyone. See you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.